Hello, my name is Sophie Tversky and this is The Curious Connector. Today I'm here with Dr. Lucy Desmond, who is a resident at Western Health and also the founder of Beauty Within Medicine. Welcome, Lucy. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you. So to start with, what is Beauty Within Medicine? So Beauty Within Medicine is a medical education platform that I founded about a year ago now. Um, we provide daily accessible content for medical students and other health professionals on social media and also monthly to our subscribers who sign up for free online. The main purpose is though to create a new series of foundational medical textbooks for medical students um, that are inclusive of all, celebrate diversity and try and bridge the gap between theoretical knowledge and clinical application. So to expand from that, what are some challenges facing the medical profession? including education? Yes, so um, I think the challenges that I saw that were occurring um, that have fueled the reason that I started Beauty Within Medicine is that I do think that medical education is socially outdated. Um, there are, so to give you some examples of that, I think one, um, health medical education from a a national sense, I think, needs to improve. I think uh, rolling out educational, uh, medical educational, medical education programs throughout schooling would greatly assist um, the medical field. Not just people would present um, more appropriately either to a, a hospital or to their local GP, but people will also know what signs and symptoms are alarming and when, and they'll probably present earlier. Uh, I think that other issues with medical education within um, when teaching medical students, I think that uh, medical schools often try and focus on teaching in black and white rather than in shades of grey. And I think that that needs to change. Um, some key examples that I remember going through uh, medical school was that surface anatomy is always taught on a young white or Anglo-Saxon male who's very healthy. Um, and while this can assist greatly with um, looking at surface anatomy, so that's um, someone's, you draw, say, a lungs on someone's chest to know where they're located, um, that's not your typical patient. Another thing that's not taught is vulval diversity, which um, everyone's vulva is different and we're not taught that there is a difference with that. Um, also, various other things such as intersex we don't talk about. Um, and yeah, there, there are lots of things in the way that medicine is, is taught in a socially outdated manner that I hope to change. So when a patient, from, in, from a clinical perspective, when a patient comes into a hospital, what is that pro process like in terms of, uh, from a doctor's perspective and a problem solving perspective? And how do you make the patient feel human and feel wanted and needed in a space that's potentially quite scary? Yeah, absolutely. And it is about making the patient feel human. I think often we get taught about them being a patient, but I realistically, I, I'd much prefer, we, we often get taught to um, ask the patient about why they're presenting to start with and then learn about their social history or their family history. But I think ideally we should start by talking about their social history and um, their family history, personal past medical history first. Um, if they are medically stable, because you need to understand who the person is that is your patient, and then you can understand why they've presented here today. Um, so focusing on a patient presenting to the ED, um, there are things that I would love to change. So forms, for example, when you're coming into the hospital, um, people, all people, regardless of how they identify, um, need to be able to fill out a form and not just a checkbox that says male or female. Then once they come in to the hospital, um, that's when, once they've been seen by a triage by the nurse and they come into the ED cubicle, um, doctors need to be um, problem solving the whole time. That's the beauty of medicine is that um, nothing is static and things are always changing and uh, you need to work out what the right questions are to ask that patient. And within that, you need to be building rapport with that patient because the patient won't tell you they won't answer certain questions or they won't give you certain information unless you ask specific questions and they feel comfortable with you as their doctor. Um, did that answer your question? Absolutely. Let's delve into, um, firstly, what makes a good question and how do you delve into pinpointing the problem? 
Yeah. So I'll caveat, um, I am a junior doctor, so I, I too am still learning and I learn a lot from my senior colleagues. Uh, but certainly working out when you are taking a history from a patient, you need to know when to ask. You certainly need to ask open questions um, to allow the, the individual who is your patient to freely express themselves and to feel heard. Uh, and, and that also helps to build rapport by actively listening to them during those open questions. Uh, you then need to work out what focused questions and sometimes closed questions specifically ask the patient um, to narrow down on what's actually going on. So uh, you do need to build rapport, but you also need to ask the right questions. And that um, the, knowing which questions to ask is is something that you learn as you as you become more skilled as a as a clinical doctor, I think, and, and still something that I'm still learning. And and I would hope that all doctors would say the same thing because medicine is about ongoing learning, and that's yeah, that's part of the reason why I love medicine so much. Absolutely. And that other aspect, the rapport element. How do you mm. build rapport with your with your patients? Yeah, I think I think. Uh, Building rapport is so critical, and I actually think that in medical school, um, there should be more discussions about personal prejudices that we may have that we may be unaware of. So I think to really understand others, you must first understand yourself, um, and we need to be able to pull all of that away uh, and all learn to be inclusive because I think that people can feel if you're... Um, disagree with some of their life choices or perhaps how they express themselves and and from that they won't be inclined to tell you what's going on i certainly know um, a lot of people from the lgbtqi community don't feel comfortable going to some medical practices or certain hospitals because they don't feel included um, so i think um, student doctors should delve into um, why they think the way that they do and have their beliefs questioned um, to really understand why they think the way that they do and maybe question some of those judgments that they didn't realize that they had. And then we need to be talking to patients in an open and non-judgmental uh, way uh, and truly believe and truly be non-judgmental. And for a patient, what is that process of, that they go through when a doctor is problem solving? How do you work with other colleagues to pinpoint a problem, to identify their disease or what they're going through? And who do you work with in that process? Yeah, so from the perspective of a doctor or from the perspective of a patient? From the perspective of a doctor, yes. Yeah, um, so problem solving is ongoing um, with medicine. And from the perspective of a doctor, we're obviously working as a team. So in a um, hospital setting, it's not just a doctor, but the bedside nurse is critical and, and they change shifts every eight hours. So there's a team of bedside nurses that looks after the patient. You've then got allied health. Um, we wouldn't, we'd be lost without war clerks as well who help with all the admin. And then there are several other people in the hospital that create the team to enable um, a safe admission and discharge of patients. Um, the problem solving that occurs normally occurs with multiple people within the team, so junior doctors um, and senior doctors, uh, and open communication between them. And um, yeah, it's just important. So when you first see a patient, you'll be taking a history um, based on the rapport that you've built or how comfortable that person feels with the specific doctor. They might extract a certain history, um, but a more senior doctor might go back and ask very, um, poignant questions and get a very different history from the patient. So um, it's all about working together as a team um, and yet yeah, knowing your roles within that team as well. And you were talking about from the, edu from the educational perspective, there's such a big gap between what you learn at medical school, both in terms of the emotional intelligence and social aspect, but also the clinical aspect. Um, and the clinical world, and how how do you break through that, and how do you change that system, and how have you gone about it? Yeah, so I think um, 
part of the reason I started Beauty Within Medicine is that I did feel that there was a gap between the theoretical knowledge that you learn in medical school and then that clinical application that occurs once you start working as a doctor. Certainly universities try very, diff uh, try very hard to overcome this by integrating doctors into the hospital. And I think um, in some areas of Australia, this is getting done really well and in others, um, perhaps not as well. Um, but I think that it all comes back to education and educating senior doctors about the importance of educating junior doctors on the ward and including them as part of the team. Um, but also the way that uh, medicine is taught at medical schools, it's often in quite a siloed way where you learn all about the cardiovascular system and then all about the respiratory system um, and about all the various systems. It's quite difficult to teach medicine to someone because you feel like you need to know everything all at once. So you want to understand the drugs and you want to know that mechanisms of the core conditions and um, all of that has to somehow come together. So um by no means am i wanting to create my own medical program but i hope that beauty within medicine will be seen as an adjunct that makes some of the connections between um lectures and tutorials that sometimes may seem a bit erratic throughout the course work um and then bring it back to why is this important and um how can this be applied in the clinical setting I'm going to draw a few themes together as well is a, a key theme that I'm hearing is language and communication, both towards the patient to understand what's happening to them, but also for the, the soon to be doctor in medical school who's trying to piece together what a specific disease looks like, what a specific condition looks like um, and symptoms of that. Um, what are some lessons that you're learning through creating um, beauty within medicine about language and communication? Yeah, well, I think, as I always saying, medicine is amazing and it requires ongoing learning, but there really is, like most industries, medicine has its own language and it's so important to use that language um, in, in the right circumstances. So when um, medical students need to learn that language to be able to talk about patients with other medical professionals, and I think sometimes that that language is um, implied and not explicitly taught. And that can cause a lot of stress for medical students when they do enter the clinical field so they don't actually know what's going on because people are speaking another language. So I think that that's one, one thing that's really important is to, and that's what I'm trying to do with social media is to try and start introducing that language early and in short snippets in the hope that that'll um, alleviate some stress once um, medical students enter the ward. In terms of other ways that language needs to be used in a very specific way is uh, when educating patients. So um, say a patient might come in uh, and need to have immediate surgery to say remove their appendix or gallbladder. Um, doctors need to be able to go back into layman's terms and be able to discuss that in a non-medical way. I think sometimes we do try our best, but um, I think that there's actually a lack of understanding of how poor the health literacy is nationally. And when it comes back to education, if there was adequate teaching at schools about the human body and the structure and the function of it, I think that would greatly assist. Um, and then the third part of language is um, with, um, as an example is advertising of say prostate checks and breast checks that, that always refers to a certain gender identity. So it'll uh, say female breast checks uh, or prostate, male prostate checks and that's quite disrespectful to people that don't identify specifically as male or female um, and also to those who are intersex. So apart from the education piece, which is clearly fundamental, what other ways can we destigmatize um, these 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 issues? Because I feel like they're not just a medical um, problem; they're also a social. They're a social problem. There's there's a barrier towards acceptance. Um, yes. And do you have any views about other ways to o overcome those things? Um, education. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone needs to be taught. It's just, it, it, everything comes back to education. And I just think that um, we have a captive audience when people are in primary school and secondary school for most of the time for most people. Um, and it just, 
blows my mind that there isn't a more structured program that occurs throughout primary school and secondary school to teach life and to teach the body. I just, I think that there should be a class called life and you should learn about accounting and um, paying your taxes and you should learn about your body and the, the importance of contraception and um, STIs. And there are so many things that you could teach in that. And I think within that, um, we should be teaching inclusivity. I certainly think the generations that are, that are coming behind us, maybe one or two, not too many generations yet, but I, I do think that they're much more inclusive of everyone. And um, I think that they're making moves and they're making the changes and uh, we need to hurry up. I think that I don't know about in law, but certainly in medicine, just basic things like I spoke about with forms um, that simply makes people feel excluded and not welcome. Uh, and if we can't provide basic healthcare to people, well, they don't feel that they can access it because they don't feel welcome, then that's quite atrocious, I would say. And leading on from that, I love your three word philosophy, which is inclusivity, education and community. We've touched on inclusivity and education, but can you talk about this last bit, community? Yeah, so I think um, a big issue for me, I found going through medical school is, and, and also as being a doctor, it's a very competitive industry, like a lot of um, industries are. And I think that there's a huge focus on people getting high marks um, to enable them to get the job that they want at the end of the day. And this leads to a lot of competition. Um, as you're probably well aware, there's a lot of, there's a huge mental health burden that um, the medical industry suffers. And I think um, it's one related to the fact that a lot of us are type A personalities and um, quite driven, uh, but it's also this competitive nature that, um, that continues to be fueled. And I think if there's more of a focus on um, finding the joy of learning um, rather, than on rather than competing with each other, I think um, not only will we create better doctors, um, but there will be less of a mental health issue for doctors Obviously, we need to um, stop overworking doctors so much and there's so much unpaid overtime in, in almost every hospital that I'm aware of. Um, but, yeah, I think that's, that's the way that we need to move. And leading on to that is how, how do you approach cultural adoption, having those conversations with your, your bosses about the changes you want to make? Do you see an easy shift or is are they difficult conversations to have? Um, no, I think it, it'll be, it's a very difficult shift. And I probably, I don't think I've specifically had those conversations with uh, any of my bosses, but um, I've told them about the people that I have told about Beauty Within Medicine and the reason behind it. I've certainly had mixed responses. Um, in medicine, it's, as I imagine it is also in law, is that, you all end up on tram, tram tracks and you're, you know, you finish medicine, it's expected you become an intern and then you become a resident and what program are you going to enter into? And um, it's just this ongoing cycle of what are we doing next? And, you know, the fact that I've stepped off that tram track, um, some people get really excited about it and there's, certain, but there has been a certain pushback from people because it's considered inappropriate. Um, but I figure that if, people, if everyone's not happy about it, then maybe that's the right direction to be going for some change and shaking things up. So I guess I'm inadvertently trying to make change from the bottom up by starting Beauty Within Medicine. And um, if I start making enough noise, maybe some of the senior people will start hearing it. And in terms of starting from the bottom up, um, what spurred you, what has kept you going in trying to solve this problem? Uh, I think that I didn't realise how socially outdated the medical education that I was receiving was. Um, it's certainly changing. All of the uh, universities in Australia are moving in the right direction, but I just think it needs to happen a little bit faster. Um, and I get, yeah, I, I'm spurred on because I'm learning as well. Uh, and that's the greatest thing. I see Beauty Within Medicine as being a community where we'll all learn off each other. And I don't, um, we're all ultimately going to be colleagues, 
So people that have just started medical school, they'll be my colleagues in a few years. Um, and I think that we've all got something to offer and a different perspective. It's a lot of the reason why we introduce ward stories as well, which we release every Wednesday. So they um, are stories or short tales that are written by health professionals of any level. Um, and it's from their perspective of an event or um, something that they witnessed in um, hospital or community medicine. And I think that can be really helpful to just open our eyes and um, having a different perspective of medicine is also really helpful. And share st stories openly and honestly. Yes, yes, exactly. And that's also why we say that if you'd like to remain anonymous, you can. And, and from that, we've had a number of people remain anonymous who have um, been very raw and open uh, and that's extremely helpful Absolutely. for teaching. Yeah. So through your process of tackling a very big system um, and bringing people along that journey, how do you now see creativity and what does that mean to you? Yeah, so um, I never have seen myself as a creative person. I've always um, been very, I don't know, I always focused on maths and, um, I don't know, science predominantly. Um, but I've realised since starting Beauty Within Medicine that, um, you know, the line between art and science isn't isn't so discreet. It's actually quite blurred. And, and the more that we introduce art into science, I think that that can increase learning and, and make learning more joyful. So um, for me, creativity is everything. I think that we should try and introduce it more into every workplace um, in any medium. I think um, being creative adds a, adds a new dimension um, just in the way that we learn and the way that things are taught. Uh, if things are more visual, obviously visual learning isn't for everyone, but I think for a lot of people, people will remember things better when it's visually taught. Absolutely. And to summarise that, what's a word, a phrase or a picture of what creativity means to you? Uh, joyful learning would be what creativity means to me. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Lucy, for joining me today on talking about beauty within medicine, changing the med medical profession step by step and rethinking um, visual learning and also inclusivity, education and community. Thank you. No, thank you so much for having me. What you're doing is wonderful. Very good.